So first I'm going to walk you through loading the DLL required for the X-Plane move and using that DLL to create an X-Plane move. And I'm going to use, use a simple block model to do that. So in this simple block model, we just have three parts and three tools. And the objective of this model is to preserve our three unequal gaps. We have three unequal gaps between our housing wall, our rear door, then we also have this gap right here between our two doors, and then one final gap between our front door and our housing. So first, to use the X-Plane DLL, you need to have the correct DLL loaded. So you can get to the user DLL dialog either by clicking this button right over here called user DLL. It's obviously in a different location if you are uh, in a different software. But once you have the user DLL dialog open, you just click this add DLL button, and then we're going to navigate to the DCU underscore MTM lib 2 dot DLL. It's move tolerance and measure library too. So I'll click add DLL. And then moving through here, um, it's in our extra DLLs folder. And then if you scroll down, we're looking for DCU MTM lib2, and there it is right there. I'll click open. I already had it in here, so it doesn't matter, but just for all of you watching. So we have that already loaded, so I'll click close. And now if I go into one of my DLL dialogs, so to get to a DLL dialog, you go into your moves dialog, and you select user DLL from your drop-down list, then click add analysts. That'll open up your user DLL move dialog. And then in here, you'd select your routine, and the, the X-Plane move goes by the DCS move min dist fit uh, DLL. That's what, uh, that's what it's named right now. Um, if you want to use it today, you have to go through this process to find it in our user DLL section. So that's how you get to it. I'll go ahead and cancel out of this one and open up a completed dialog. So this first move is moving our housing tool to our housing. So to do that, we have 11 total object target pairs. We have three in what we're calling a primary direction, and that's direction one, two, and three. If you guys can see my compass down here, that's the X direction. Then we have two that are in the up-down direction, our Z direction. And then we have six that are actually in our Y direction. So that's object target pairs six through 11. So we'll open up this dialog. We can look at a completed X-plane move. On the left side here, I have all my object points. All my object points are part of my housing tool. These are the points that are best fitting to my housing. And I have 11 of them in there. And then for my target features, I have 11 matching target features. It's important that you have your object target pairs correct, obviously, just like with any other move like the six plane move. Um, then we also have 11 directions. So you have to go through and figure out which object target pair you want to set the direction of. Then you set that, your direction index to that number, and then you have the same direction type options that we give you for all of your move tolerances and measures. Now this first move is moving the housing tool to the housing. On the housing, I have a tolerance applied to both walls, and it's just an independent tolerance of range five millimeters. So when I animate here, we'll see the housing tool, which is that first one, move to the housing. And now if I deviate at this stage, We'll see the housing tool moving around just a little bit with that variation that we got from the tolerance applied to the housing walls. And if I zoom in on this specific point right here, you'll see that these two, I'm going to slow it down a little bit, these two points are not lining up. The X-plane move is trying to best fit them in that direction that I specified using the move. So if I close that. directions. 
All right. Um, so that's in direction eight. That's the, uh, the control we were just looking at. So moving on in this model, we also have tools that are locating to our rear door and to our front door. And then those tools are finally moved to their positions on the housing tool. So they're now moving to the front to the housing tool at their front door position and their rear door position. This would be an example of like a vision fit kind of move, kind of locating scheme. So first, we have our best fit for the front door. And again, we have a three, two, six move. So we have three primary locators, two secondary locators, but then we have six locators that are actually in the tertiary direction. So it's a three, two, six, and we're best fitting those six. So this will be the same as with our other move. And then similarly, we're going to move the front door to the front door fixture to the front door. And then the last moves are just moving each of them to the housing fixture, like I said earlier. So now if I deviate the whole model built, we'll see that the X plane was trying to best fit. First, the housing fixture to the housing, then each of the door fixtures to their doors, and then they're all moving in together. So it's preserving these three unequal gaps that we have in our model. So now what happens if we add an offset to this? So I have this offset right here which is up 20 millimeters only on this face of the rear door. Now keep in mind, the way we have our X-plane move set up, it's going to preserve these two gaps equally. So if I turn this offset on, I now will build Nothing changed yet because there's no offset actually in place. But once I use our deviate to offset function, locate under deviate, you'll see that now this face is representing our left face for our rear door. And this face is still representing our right face because we had no offset applied to that one. And both those gaps closed equally by 10 millimeters because our offset was 20 millimeters. It's preserving both those gaps equally. What the x move is trying to do is it's trying to close all gaps equally, but because of the way we have our vision fit fixtures set up here, that's why we have all these tools, is we're actually trying to preserve all the gaps. So that does it for this model. Any comments, Gary? No, I think that was great. I have, Thank uh, you, Gary. I have some questions if all you right. want. All right, let's do a couple questions right now on this one. Sure. Uh, so the first one is, does, it, does the move allow intersection of parts, or is there always contact and gap? That's a good question. Uh, the move does allow intersection of parts. It's trying to minimize the gap at every location. This is actually an example I can show for this. It's going to be somewhat tough to tell, but our rear door here, it has two points at the bottom that are acting as our secondary. And if I nominal build, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of my offset for this example. While he sets that up, an example would would be as if with your tolerances, your door actually got too big. It's going to, yeah. it's going to put the mm -hmm. door in the best possible position and all your measurements will be crashing. Yep. You know, so it still best fits even if the... Uh, if the object target points are going negative. It doesn't have some stop that says it has to be greater than zero. Right. It can go above zero, below zero. Okay. Thank you. Um, I got two other quick ones. Mm -hmm. uh, does this move account for high points? So in other words, does it prevent pass-through conditions that we might see when modeling complex step planes? 
That's similar to the interference that, question. I think that's similar. Yeah. No, it will it will not auto net to a high point. Mm -hmm. It will let the points crash. It's okay. going, you know, like like I mentioned, if if the door width was 100 millimeters and the door opening was 98, the door is going to go in and it's going to be crashing. And that tells you that there's an issue, or is that something that you need to if, something you look yeah, yeah, if you wrote a measurement, that's the, that's the idea. Is if if you wrote a measurement at every object target point that you used in the X plane move, then it's going to best fit the part, and you can see what the uh, crash would be. Mm. All right, so we're going to move on to our next model then. So our next model was used to validate how well the X-Plane move was doing compared to uh, our other potential over-constraint options. And all of those were compared to the compliant model results. So we compared 12 typical methods used for over-constraining models uh, to a baseline, which were the results that we got from the same model using compliant modeler. We compared it in three categories. The first one was the mean correlation to the baseline, the baseline again being the compliant modeler results. And then also internally at DCS, we scored each of these based on their subjectiveness and their ease of use. So if you have a high subjectiveness score, it means it's a very subjective move. And if, if you have low ease of use, it means it's very challenging for a user to use. Um, we believe that the X-plane move, while being second in accuracy to using bend planes throughout, the bend planes are very subjective and also very challenging to use, whereas the X-plane is very simple and very easy to use for new users specifically and all users 